May git-anim na toneladang tilapia na ang namatay sa Lake Cebu, South Cotabato. Ayon sa bantay ng lawa, epekto ito ng pagbaba ng level ng dissolved oxygen sa tubig. In this news clip, it is very evident that many fishes have died due to the lack of oxygen within the lake. It is because that oxygen is a very important gas in order to perform different body functions within living things. And that body functions can be catered within the respiratory system. But how does oxygen is really catered in the body? Let us try to find out in this episode of Science at Home. Hi everyone, welcome back to Science at Home and for today we're going to be exploring another organ system which is the respiratory system. As you all know, the respiratory system is primarily made up of our lungs in which this organ is the one responsible for the exchange of gases in and out of the body. Now, these gases involves or includes oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now, what's the difference between the two? The, difference, the main difference between the two is that the oxygen is the one needed by the body in order to perform different body functions. Meanwhile, the carbon dioxide is the one responsible or it is the one being produced by the body as a waste product. Now, the main question right here is that how does the air travel through the body? Now, let us first try to trace the pathway of air in the respiratory system. Now, the respiratory system is divided into two divisions, namely the upper and the lower respiratory tracts. Now, the upper respiratory tract is the one responsible for the receiving of air inside the body, in which it includes the nasal cavity, the pharynx, and the larynx. Then, after the upper respiratory tract, we have the lower respiratory tract, in which this is the one helps in the exchange of gases itself. So this includes the trachea, the bronchi, the bronchioles, and the alveoli. Now, let us first start with the upper respiratory tract. Now, within the upper respiratory tract, we have the nasal cavity, or also known as the main opening of the air inside the body. So what happens is that as the air passes through the nasal cavity, the air is being filtered with the help of the mucous membrane as it traps different dust particles which is not necessary within the respiration process. Then after the nasal cavity, it will pass down through the pharynx, which is also known as the common passageway of air and food. Now, the pharynx is also known as the throat. Then after the pharynx, it will pass now to the larynx. Now, the larynx is also known as the voice box simply because that it is the one that helps in the production of our vocal cords. Now, within the larynx, there is this specialized structure that prevents the entry of food through the lungs, and this is what we call the epiglottis. Now, the function of the epiglottis is controlled by the next part of the respiratory tract, which is the trachea or the windpipe. Now, as you can see right here, okay, so the trachea is somewhat made up of different cartilaginous strings in which these cartilaginous strings or bone-like structures helps in the epiglottis to perform its function. Also, within the trachea, it is also made up of ciliated mucosa in which this ciliated mucosa helps for the further filtering of air. Now, at the end of the trachea, there is this, these two sub-branching, which is what we call the bronchi. Now, the bronchi leads to the left and the right lungs, or this is also known as the bronchial tubes. Now, the trachea and the bronchi is similar with each other in the sense that they are both made up of cartilaginous rings. Now, as you can see in this diagram, there is this somewhat sheet of muscle that can be found underneath the lungs. And this is what we call the diaphragm. Now, the diaphragm is the muscle that controls the outtake and intake of air in the body. Now, later on, we're going to be discussing what is the difference or how does the diaphragm perform its function within the inhalation and the exhalation process. Now, going on. We have the lower respiratory tract still. Now, after the bronchi, it tends to go through smaller airways, which is what we call the bronchioles. But this time, the bronchioles are not anymore made of cartilaginous rings, simply because in order to help for the expanding and contracting of the lungs as it inhales and exhales air. 
Then at the end of each bronchioles, there is these air sacs which is also known as the alveoli. As you can see, the alveoli is covered with these tiny blood vessels which is what we call the capillaries. Now, the capillaries helps in the exchange of the gases itself. So later on, we're going to be discussing the process of the gas exchange within the alveoli. Now, going on, take note that the bronchioles and the alveoli are the two main structures that comprises the lungs itself. Okay, so now let us discuss how does the air uh, functions within the lungs during inhalation and exhalation process. As we all know, inhalation is the intake of air. So what happens through the inhalation process is that the diaphragm contracts or it moves down. So as the diaphragm moves down, what happens is that the air is being inhaled. So what happens is that the air enters through the body. Now, as the air enters through the body, what happens is that the rib cage expands due to the air that is filling up the space of the lungs. Then, as the air fills up the lungs, what happens is that, okay, the volume increases, okay, then take note that the volume is somewhat inversely proportional to the pressure, okay, so what happens is that when the volume increases, the pressure decreases, and also the air rushes in, so meaning air rushes in, it enters through the body. Now, what happens, what happens when it goes to exhalation? So, exhalation is the process of exhaling air or removing air outside of the lungs. So, what happens is that the diaphragm relaxes or it moves up. So, as the diaphragm moves up, what happens is that okay, the air is being exhaled and the rib cage becomes smaller because the air rushes out of the body. Then, as the air rushes out of the body, what happens through the volume of the lungs? Okay, the volume decreases. Then, as I mentioned a while ago, since they are inversely related with one another, so the pressure is now increasing. So, as the volume decreases, the pressure increases. Then, therefore, the air rushes out. So, that's how the diaphragm helps within the respiration process. But here's the main question. How does the oxygen being inhaled are being, is being transferred or being absorbed by the body. Now, it happens within the alveoli. So, take note, within the alveoli, there's this special process. It's what, it's what we call the diffusion. So, the diffusion process involves the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide within the alveoli and the capillaries. So, what happens is that there is these two types of blood. So, take note of the colors being represented in this diagram. So, we have the somewhat purple-like, purple-blue color, and the red, the dark red color. So, what happens is that, okay, so the blue color, uh, blue colored blood being represented here is what we call the deoxygenated blood. So, the deoxygenated blood is the one, resp is the one filled up with carbon dioxide. So, what happens is that uh, the deoxygenated blood carries carbon dioxide, so what happens through the diffusion process, so it moves from the capillaries through the alveoli, then as return, what happens is that the oxygen as inhaled within the end of the alveoli, the oxygen enters through the bloodstream, which then the deoxygenated blood becomes the oxygenated blood or the oxygen-rich blood. Now, what happens within this process is that it involves the difference in the pressure as well. So, take note that in terms of the exchange of gases, in, in, it always involves the exchange of uh, pressure within a, uh, an area of higher area pressure to a lower area pressure. So, what happens right here, okay, in the first picture as you can see, so there's a higher concentration of oxygen pressure in the alveolus or in the alveoli, then as it moves from the alveolus to the body tissues, the pressure moves from a higher to a lower pressure. Same goes with the carbon dioxide, but this time from the body tissues and to the alveolus. Okay, so that concludes our episode for today. So this has been your Sir Dave saying keep safe and always take note that always have fun learning science at home. Goodbye!